Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Um, our project is working on uh, data intensive applications. And from Indiana University, we have a group of uh, uh, CS students and staff. And this project is supervised by Dr. Fox. And we work with Microsoft and also domain experts from different areas. Here is the chart of uh, data intensive architecture. At the bottom stack is the bare metal. It's computers, networks, and storage. On top of that is a future grid uh, platform. Future Grid is a new, uh, newly NSF funded uh, project um, providing testbed for su supporting new approaches to parallel grids and uh, cloud computing for science applications. And on top of that, we develop a cloud using technologies like MapReduce, Dryad, and Hadoop, and we also have systems like classic uh, HPC, including MPI and threading. And we develop a suite of data mining algorithms, including clustering and uh, multi dimensional scaling, uh, general topographic mapping and uh, uh, principal component analysis and uh, correlated, uh, canonical correlated analysis. And also we develop uh, our own visualization tools. And on the top of the stack is a, a suite of applications. Our focus is on biomedical. And there are two uh, bio applications. One is assembly of genes. Another is uh, gene pair uh, sequence alignment. And uh, health application will try to correlate uh, childhood obesity to uh, environmental, da environmental data. And for PEPCAM data, we'll try to reduce the dimension from high dimension to low dimension to aid drug discovery. And our work is based on the top three stacks and we're interfacing uh, future grid and with t work with them to test our applications. Here I borrowed the architecture from future grid and we have uh, win uh, Windows and a Linux cluster to test our applications. And this is the uh, details. We have a 256 cores of Linux cluster and a newly uh, Tempest Windows cluster of 768 cores. We have a view of cloud computing. I have two components. One is the infrastructure, another is the runtime. The infrastructure including that uh, dynamic uh, uh, providing of services through the uh, virtual machines. And the runtimes including what I mentioned in the previous uh, slides, including the, all the uh, uh, cloud runtimes, uh, MapReduce, uh, Hadoop, and uh, Dryad. And what we're trying to find out is that if this kind of very successful information retrieval technology can be extended to use on scientific applications like we care about. And I will elaborate a little bit about our approach and give a conclusion at the end. And the main issue is that uh, all our complicated applications in uh, data mining use the iterative MapReduce. And we try to find out how to work this out. Here's another chart of a data intensive architecture. So we have a bunch of data from the sensors and from the web, and they're very large in, uh, in volume. And initially, they go to save into database or files, and they got the initial processing to reduce the data size. And this is the pipeline and, uh, of filters. Uh, this is iterative. And we have the different stages. We can apply all sorts of uh, algorithms or data mining tools. And at the end, we have the result and put into a visualization. This chart is a detailed chart for MapReduce structure. We have a map, and which is a data parallel computation. And in, the, uh, in between the different maps, we have a communication through messaging and files. And the important step is reduce to combine all the result. And we finally uh, uh, provide the result to uh, users through the portals interface. While we have a lot of implementation of uh, uh, data mining algorithms. I give a simple example uh, of uh, Alua sequencing. And Alua is one of the largest uh, gene families in human genome. And it's important because you have over one million gene sequences. And we have uh, this, this uh, problem is that we have uh, genes and each genes have to pair with the other genes to calculate distance. And this is the n squared problems. So first we need to calculate the distance matrix and then we try to use this distance matrix to uh, the clustering, find gene families. And then we reduce the high dimension to lower, like three dimension, and then we visualize them. Note that we have tested on 50,000 genes, and this problem runs a total of 10 hours on uh, 768 calls. Here's the chart of our, our, our workflow. 
uh, first we calculate the, uh, the distance matrix, and this is a, a block scattered algorithm. Just twist it a little bit, and you'll see that uh, because symmetry, and we only cal calculate the upper top of the uh, distance. And then we use dryad, we try to use the block assigned to nodes, and do the map step, and find it into files, and then combine the results. And we notice that there's a process that's working better in using uh, threads. And the Dryad, we implement in Dryad and uh, MPI, and they have a comparable performance. Notice that the uh, total gene distance calculation is uh, 1,250 million, and this takes less, uh, less than five hours on our clusters. This is a detailed chart of this algorithm. And I give some snapshot of our result, and this is the ALU sequencing. And if you can see that, this is the big mass in red color. This is the old gene families. And the younger ones uh, evolved, which is smaller, and it's uh, the yellow and green color. This is another application as the metagenomics. And I try to use this uh, snapshot to show that gene families have very distinct uh, clusters and structures. This is interesting to biologists because you can see that they're clearly clustered through different colors. And we have uh, uh, extensive performance testing on all our algorithms. This is for pairwise algorithms. We try to use this chart to show the different parallel strategy and threads versus uh, MPI. When the lower parallelisms, like uh, MPI, works very well, and the 16-way parallelism that threads and uh, MPI are equivalent. And when the parallelism going up to 744, then the MPI doesn't work very well. This is a common in classic uh, uh, parallel computing because the communication takes a lot of time. This chart tries to uh, show that the, the scaling of the system. And when this flat shows the system scale well, on the y-axis shows the time per distance calculation. And we have tested on different number of sequences and we can show that roughly flat, so the system is working very well. Another uh, scaling test is not over the number of gene sequences, but over the calls, we can uh, get the similar well-behaved uh, the systems. And this chart will try to study uh, the difference in homogeneous of data impact on all the systems. And we find that uh, we create uh, gene lenses, and the average is 400, but we have the standard deviation from zero up to 300. If you see that, until up to 300, the extreme case, it performed quite well. There's another uh, comparison of the two uh, uh, cloud technology, Hadoop versus Dryad, uh, using inhomogeneous data. Uh, this is uh, uh, this are, uh, run on different uh, operating systems. One is on Linux, and the other one is on Windows. And they have a comparable result. And this chart shows that the homogeneous data, as you expected, because the data distribution is quite similar. They should have similar result. We're trying to emphasize that uh, there are a lot of complications in the system, including the cache effect. We tested that, uh, that cache size, when it's too big, and which is the block size is smaller, and each block has too, ma too many uh, data, they will not fit into the cache, and the system will not perform as well. There's another biology application we have is capture. It's a gene sampling, just similar to uh, the previous uh, uh, speaker's uh, talk. And we have a simple map and a reduced step of in this uh, application. There's a data parallel. And we try to show that in our testing, we have uh, three uh, cloud or equivalent technologies. One is Hadoop and Dryad and our own streamed uh, technology, not writing to file system. They have a comparable result. We also test our system in co uh, cloud, uh, commercial cloud uh, uh, services uh, using grid, uh, GoGrid. And this is on 32 nodes on virtual cluster. And we test it on bare metal and versus on the virtual machines. And bare metal uh, is uh, three times better. And this is not an apple to apple comparison because we cannot have the details of the settings on their virtual, commercial virtual uh, uh, environment. But we expect they will be better if we work on the future grid because all the systems that we in control, we can install Windows, we can install Linux, and the virtual machine, bare metal, we can com compare all of them in the same systems. And here are some results of uh, comparing that uh, it's a k-means clustering algorithms. And we try to show on the right-hand side that if the granularity of the size is going up, there is a penalty of a virtual machine overhead. And it's three times worse. 
Here I summarize uh, the applications that are suitable for cloud technology like MapReduce. And we have uh, classified the application into a synchronous like SIMD model and loosely synchronous and most uh, MPI uh, jobs and asynchronous were not used that much. And the placement power is 20% uh, of old classic HPC applications, but now we expect new applications as more ratio. And this is suitable for grid uh, uh, systems. And the meta problem is large granularity, like workflow type. And we also introduced the MapReduce C++ uh, is our own development of map technology using streaming. And in this, we can use uh, uh, this chart to summarize that uh, what is the MapReduce pattern. And we have a simple pattern is the input and map and output. This showed in our CAP3 example I've, I explained before. And we have also some classic ones is that input, map, and then have an important reduce step. This we have a smith waterman gene alignment example. And more uh, complicated one algorithm we all use an iterative map reduce. And this is a very important cl a class. And then on the right hand side we compare the MPI patterns. So we have algorithms implemented deterministic linear clustering. We have MDS and uh, this all fit into this category. To end my talk, I have summarized the features of our approach. And we believe that cloud technologies work very well for data intensive applications. And the iterative map reduce allows to build a complete system of single uh, cloud technology without using MPI. And we believe that a future grid will provide an important testing bed for us to test for it, all this kind of data intensive science applications, especially using virtual machines. And this is the work we're focusing on right now. And we'll provide some results and live demo in supercomputing. Finally, uh, this is the project website, www.infomore.org, SOSA. And uh, we'll have some also some presentation and uh, IU booths uh, in supercomputing for future grid. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patience. Any questions? So captures are 10K. And the K means is 4 million. No. Yes, sometimes uh, uh, because of the cache effect, we have super linear speed up. This is very common. We have never tested uh, that in that direction. Thank you.